Cabernet Sauvignon is the most widely planted red wine grape in the world. It's also one of the most sought after and makes some of the most expensive wines. People love Cabernet Sauvignon for the bold, rich flavors, and it seems like they're always looking for value. Cabernet Sauvignon is from Bordeaux in France. It's actually the offspring of Cabernet Franc and Sauvignon Blanc. People associate Cabernet Sauvignon with age-worthy collectible wines of Bordeaux, the big, bold wines of Napa and California. There's also some really fine examples in Washington State, Western Australia, and places like Margaret River, Kunawaro. Tuscany is also making its name with Cabernet Sauvignon. You'll find it all over the world. Cabernet Sauvignon is so widely planted because A, winemakers can get a return on the investment since the demand is high, and B, Cabernet Sauvignon can adapt to a lot of different soils and climates, and in different regions there are subtle nuances. A lot of wine people associate Pinot Noir with being the ultimate terroir grape, but I have a good friend who's a very talented winemaker. He told me once, I know that everybody thinks that Pinot Noir is so hard to get right, but I think Cabernet Sauvignon is a little bit tougher. That makes a lot of sense. That's why vintages are so important in Bordeaux. I think that's also a reason why Napa in California made such a big name for itself. The climate there allows for Cabernet Sauvignon, which is a late ripening grape, to get ripe every single year and produce delicious red wines that are great young and aged really nice. People want Cabernet Sauvignon for the bold, rich flavors, lots of complexity. Cabernet Sauvignon also takes to oak aging extremely well. That's the problem in the sub $25 category in the U.S. at least. A lot of the Cabernet Sauvignons off the supermarket shelves are pretty oaky, have a lot of vanilla-like flavors, something that us wine geeks don't want to see. But the other day, most consumers generally do like that flavor. The under $25 price point is tough, especially Especially with the cost of labor, glass, cork, grapes rising. Cabernet Sauvignon is one red wine grape where it's tough to find value in that range. Even abroad, some of the best Cabernet Sauvignons are well above that price point. When it comes to value Cabernet Sauvignon, I think Bordeaux is often a great buy. However, there's a lot of wine being made in Bordeaux. You really got to know what you're looking for. It's hard to sift through the producers and a lot of the more inexpensive Bordeaux based on Cabernet Sauvignon are maybe 50, 60 percent of Cabernet Sauvignon at the most. Here, we're going to go for Cabernet Sauvignon varietal labeled wines. I've got five wines here, all under $25, including a couple supermarket wines. Let's see if we can find a deal. Affordable wine's gonna taste out of affordable glass. This is the Rove Sia Hand Blown. This is a burgundy glass, actually, but I find it works really well with big red wines, including Cabernet Sauvignon. This is the best inexpensive red wine glass I've ever used. I have a link in the description box if you wanna check it out. I didn't have to corv in these. I just opened them and had somebody mix them up for me. I have a few wines that you can find in the everyday supermarkets. I don't know how they're gonna be, but maybe the supermarket wines will show well. Here's wine number one. Wine one has a lot of vanilla. Lots of vanilla right off the back. Oak, cocoa powder. But there is decent fruit. It's not overly vanilla. The oak does kind of take over, but it's not obnoxious. There still is black cherry, black currant type flavors. Very typical. What do you see in Cabernet Sauvignon? Just a touch of mocha. You, however, won't find any green notes in this Cabernet Sauvignon, which I find attractive. These like bell pepper notes, you're not going to see it here. I have to say, this is a pretty rich wine. It's got nice structure, nice tannins. For an inexpensive Cabernet Sauvignon, I think this is what a lot of people are looking for. It's got this like kiss of oak, but it's not too much. It's not too obnoxious. I think that number one is pretty decent effort, pretty nice length. I'm tasting these in the morning, which is the best time to taste wine, by the way, because your palate's completely clean. I intermittent fast every single day, so I haven't eaten. It hasn't really affected my palate. Two is like super oaky. One had oak, but it had enough fruit to combat it. Two, it just, the problem was Cabernet Sauvignon, the raw materials, the grapes can get pretty expensive. For more inexpensive wines, you use lesser quality, lesser concentrated grapes, and then you can cover up some of that flavor with oak. I have to say the nose is pretty oaky. But the fruit is pretty decent here. There's a slight vanilla aftertaste, which bothers me a little bit. But I think for most people, especially people in the United States that are drinking wine casually, are really going to like this flavor. I think it's actually pretty solid. Uh, none of the wines here are that offensive. One and two were quite similar, except two, the oak kind of lingered on the palate. Let's move on to three here. Three is nice. 
The fruit is more center stage here. There's like a deeper fruit. I don't pick up the oak. There's a deeper black cherry, black currant, black raspberry, even like a touch of fig, cool peppermint. This is like really high. It's even a touch floral is quite nice. The tannins here are pretty soft. They grip the palate, but they massage it quite nice. This is a super complex wine at that price point. I think it's very good. Let's move on to four. Four also comes out swinging with lots of oak. But again, there's enough black fruit. I have to say, none of these wines here are that offensive. They're all pretty solid. Black cherry. The fruit seems a little bit better quality in wine three. Wine four. It's balanced, there is enough fruit, there's enough black fruit flavors here. I like some of the complexities on three, but four is pretty good. Long balance, actually four is pretty tannic, so it's pretty astringent. A lot of casual drinkers don't like that drying sensation in their mouth, but I think this wine has a life ahead of it. It's got a little bit more grip. I actually think it's pretty solid. Let's move on to number five. I was expecting to hate some of these wines. I usually prefer cheaper Merlot as opposed to cheaper Cabernet Sauvignon, but these are okay. Five uh, doesn't smell right. A little bit dusty, it's not cork. The grapes don't smell as high of quality. Ugh. It smells like a dusty basement. It's not cork though. When it kind of chokes off the fruit, there's like mud, there is some cherry. I'm left with like a lot of drying tannins in my mouth. It's not super enjoyable, but it's not the worst thing in the world. I'm gonna go back and retaste this since these are more inexpensive wines. Sometimes wines like that fall apart in the glass and with time, let's check it out real quick. That's why sometimes you have to take these blind tastings at face value. Wines change, we change, wines change with time. Number one really started to fall apart in the glass. The wood just started to take over. Three and four were still really good, even got a tad bit better. Let's see what they are. Start out with wine number five, which was quite simple, quite dusty. That's the only problem with it. I think that a lot of people, it's serviceable, but for 25 bucks and less, I think that you can do a lot better. I gave it 85 points. Let's check it out. Cab's hard to get right at this price point. Let's check it out. This is the Le Grand Noir Cabernet Sauvignon from France. Says it's oak aged for six months. 17 US dollars. This is available at Total Wine and More. It's from the Languedoc in France. 85% Cabernet Sauvignon, 15% Syrah. In Europe, wines have to be at least 85% of the grape to put the grape variety on the label. In the US and California, it only needs to be 75%. 17 US dollars, it's okay. I've tasted their GSM before, which is I think much better than that wine. Not super exciting. Okay, let's move on to wine number one. I think that this is one of the supermarket wines. It's one of the wines that tricks you up front. I thought it was pretty solid. I went back to it. The oak started to take over. It was rich, decent tannins. It, this is a decent wine, not super exciting. I gave it 86 points. Let's take a look here. It is a supermarket wine, well-known brand. This is the Joel Gott 815 Cabernet Sauvignon from California, 2021, 20 bucks. Uh, I think it's readily available. Man, I think in that price point, you go for something with Spain, maybe some Cote de Rhone from the south of France, I think you're gonna have a much more enjoyable drinking experience. Let's move on to number two. I think one, two, and five were the supermarket wines. That was just my opinion. Oaky Nose. It seemed at first that it was a tad oakier than wine one. It was quite similar in flavors. When I retasted them, one got a little worse, two kind of stayed the same. I gave it 87 points. Let's take a look. I think it's pretty solid depending on the price. Let's take a look. This is another supermarket famous brand. This is the Josh Cabernet Sauvignon. 2021. This comes in at 17 bucks. A little bit better buy than the Joel got in my opinion from my palate, but you have to remember, that's not an indictment on you if you like the wine. If you like the wine, heck, you like it. Us wine geeks want wines that are not as commercialized, not Coca-Cola wines. At that price point, 17, 20 bucks, I think you can get a lot of Bordeaux that bring a little more bang for the buck. Okay, the top two. I thought by far these were the best wines. These wines both, for me, scored over 90 points. Wine number four, it was just balanced, but it has tannins, it had structure. I think it had a little bit of life ahead of it. I think it's good. I give it 90 points. I think this is worth checking out. Let's take a look here. 
This is worth checking out. This is the eight at the gate, Rat and Bully Cabernet Sauvignon Single Vineyard 2019, comes in at 22 bucks. I'm surprised, a little bit more tannic. The hard thing is, here's where I cheated a little bit. I don't think that this wine's available in the USA. I just had a pack of their wines. I thought I'd throw it in. I know in Australia, it's like 28 Aussie dollars. Rat and Bully is a region that's right next to Kunawara, known for its Terra Rosa, its red soils. That's where you get it. A lot of flavor profile, a lot more tannins than I would expect from Aussie Cab. Structured, I think that can age really nice and it's under a screw cap. Real nice wine. I gave that 90 points, by the way. Number three, this was the most complex. It was floral, had all these nuances, these black raspberries, black cherries I talked about. The tannins were fairly soft. I thought this might be the Australian wine. This is drinking super well now, but man, complexity might age pretty nice in the medium term. To me, this is a buy. 91 plus points, I think it's very good. This is the Barra. Mendocino Reserve Cabernet Sauvignon from Mendocino County, 2020, comes in at 22 bucks, made from organic grapes. Napa, Sonoma aren't the only places that make cab. That's the thing in wine, there is value out there. If you fight hard, you know what you're looking for. Get out of the supermarkets a little bit, like this is gonna be found directly at the winery. I don't know how it's distributed. I always recommend find a local shop, make a relationship with the owner, people work there. They're passionate about these wines, they're gonna direct you to something good. The two supermarket wines, stereotypical of what I would expect. Showed well, fruity, vanilla up front, but then, just weren't so exciting overall. So tell me, do you love Cabernet Sauvignon? Maybe you prefer Bordeaux. Do you have any favorite regions, any go-tos when it comes to value in this category? I'd love to hear. Drop it in the comments below.